Wales is special to me because it's, it's run by everyone for everyone. When they come and watch the team play, they want to see a team that represents them on the football pitch. Once you're in, you're in. You can't walk away. Come on, the balls! Free football history, Bones. How long have you got? We're standing on the 15 acres pitches. A group of guys from the military training college. They all met here in the Phoenix Park and uh, they created the Bohemian Football Club. The name Bohemian symbolised their outlook on life. You're talking about 1890 when the club was founded. The idea of Bohemia as this kind of romantic sort of place, but you know, if you look at the dictionary definition of, of Bohemian, it's someone who lives an unconventional lifestyle, and I really like that. It's a proud working class club with working class values and tradition. It's more like a family thing, like you kind of know everyone and everyone knows you and you kind of all feel the same thing when you win or lose. Oh, I suppose the club is a member's own club, it has been always. You know when you're a member you've got to say what the club is and how it should be run and I think that's always will be the case. People's lives nowadays are very transient and they don't have the old pillars of back in the day and one pillar that they do have is still their football club. That football club should become something other than just 90 minutes. It should become something that's a, a positive force in the area that it's in. You'll probably hear people that don't go to church on a Sunday anymore, but is this your church on a Friday night? Probably. You can't overemphasise how much identity has been lost. Like People used to live intergenerationally in houses not so long ago. They'd become a Cooper and Guinness, make, make kegs for your whole life. You know, they used to live on a street with their neighbours for their whole life. All of those things are gone and they've disappeared within 20, 30 years. And the football club remains, you know? And I think that it provides a lot of those pieces that have been lost in one place with one group of people. The stadium has huge history on the pitch. Pele's played Van Basten. Zidane scored his first European goal there. Daily Met became, you know, I, and I, I would say still is, the home of Irish football. Sold out to the merchant ships. Bob Marley, he was in discussions to come to Ireland and originally there was a place the promoter wanted to go to called the Royal Dublin Society. As you can imagine in the name in Ireland, that's quite an affluent place. They said they wouldn't have a Rastafarian play there. So the promoter then went back and suggested another venue, an indoor venue. But Bob said that he was conscious of ticket prices in Ireland. So he'd consider a football ground to bring the price down. Daily Mint was proposed and he accepted it again with the provision that the price was accessible for people. He said he was aware of the economic situation. Ireland in the 80s was pretty poor. It was his only ever Irish gig, his last ever outdoor gig. He played football on the pitch. Before he walked out, he said uh, that he was uh, he sang a redemption song in solidarity with the Irish struggle, which was pretty cool as well. Redemption songs. We released the shirt in 2018 and uh, went through a, like a reputable image company and we sold a lot of shirts, really more shirts than we'd ever sold. And I was at home with some mates looking at the laptop, you know, looking at the sales. Then we started drinking and um, woke up the next morning to like a legal letter to say that we didn't have the correct image rights. It's back on to Universal Music and through the Marley's, you know, that we were not for profit. We were doing this for really good reasons and there was real history behind it. And they, uh, they agreed with us, they thought it was a great idea and we released it this year. It's been a massive success. and. Uh, I think it's great because it's real history and then we've, we've put on the shirt obviously inside the collar, sport, music and culture because of the events that have happened here on the ground aren't just football history. The recession hit young people really bad and at the time Bowles was in a really dark place. It had rolled that Celtic Tiger wave and thought we could cash in and move out of Fisborough, move out of the community, out to like a big greenfield site and build a super stadium and you know chasing glory all the time and then that crashed and then the club was left with a choice of like do we want to repeat that all over again or do we want to change lane and switch tact and, and do something differently and it's bearing fruits today. I think we realise that the most important thing is, is the legacy and the sustainability of the club going forward. And the club has become a bigger thing and a more successful operation, I'd say, but ultimately it's because it's focused on areas, paradoxically, that are outside of core football, but they've also improved that. Bowes doesn't have one demographic, it has every demographic. Like this stretch of basically land from where we're sitting now in Fisborough down to the Dublin port, that's the most ethnically different stretch of land on this island. 
but ultimately people have challenges in the area, whether that's immigration, whether that's things around like the marriage equality referendum we got involved in, whether that's homelessness. We have a responsibility to that community, I suppose, because we are the community. We were crying out for fans with a disability to come and take part in our initiatives and now we have a waiting list of about 35 people with a disability every single game that enter the ballot to try and get a very small amount of tickets. And, and that just shows when you make it a more inclusive society, people will come and it makes a difference, you know, and it, they can only improve and value or make the club a better place. Our country, we were the refugees of the world. You think of like Irish people going to the UK in the 40s and 50s to build roads and they're going to the US in the 80s. And I think that only in the last 20 years in Ireland have you seen net migration where people are coming into the country. You know, there are incidents of racism, but I, I think it's, it's relatively a new phenomenon. And it's so important that you tackle issues like that before they become an issue. I suppose the club have embraced diversity and people are welcome here from, from different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different cultures. Since about 2016, we've been running buses from what are called in Ireland direct provision centres, where when migrants come to Ireland, they they get directed from the airport, from the port, into these centres and you know they kind of enter kind of a limbo land there. So we thought, why don't we just give these people 90 minutes every second week to go to a football match. I came here in Ireland uh, seeking asylum and I've been here for four years. It hasn't been an easy road. You know life in direct provision is very hard. Some have come here, they don't have friends. They need something to to cheer about. So coming in and watching football, you know you meet different people. When you go home, it doesn't end there. You continue thinking about it for the whole week until the next match. I think as a club, they're just trying to integrate everyone in the community, trying to bring everyone in, regardless who, who you are. I think that's a, that's a good move and really appreciated. To us, I think they're a family. That's one thing that I can say, they're a family. Society, you know, we have to just be there for each other and football is a way of doing that. Whether it's anti-racism or, you know, it's to do with migration, it's to do with, you know, challenging beliefs in Dublin that are detrimental to the people who live here, then we should play that role. I think Bowes is a very, very small pebble um, and it's not going to save the world. But maybe you shouldn't aspire to save the world, but you should just aspire to change what you can change in your own small little area or your own, your own radius. Who is football about? It's about a community of people. It's about a person on a terrace, it's about people behind the scenes, it's about the footballers on the pitch. If it becomes all about the footballers on the pitch, I don't think that's beneficial to football. It has made me to see friends. It has made me to feel loved here. Bose is so much more than just a football club. People have seen that it's actually genuine. I think that's what people are on board with it and people are, are moving in, in our direction. Hi, it's Jermaine Genius here from Match of the Day X. Thanks for checking out our videos on the BBC Sport YouTube channel. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss out on any new content that we're going to be posting. And we've got a video for you right here to check out right now. We'll see you soon.